What's up gamers? Stonelick here representing the Mortal Realms crew and we've got our fourth and final preview of uh, this week leading up to the Legion of Nagash uh, pre-order uh, tomorrow or right now if you're in uh, New Zealand or Australia. Um, this, uh, this preview has to do with Manfred von Karstein and the Legion of Night and it says they're Nagash's terror troops. Um, from the stories that we've heard, there's certainly an air about Manfred that he is. There's no honor there. He's uh, he wants to be respected, but he's not above uh, you know dirty tricks and underhanded uh, ploys. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the things that that they share that that kind of make for Manfred's uh, flavor of of army. So one here is they they uh, give us this uh, this new ability called the bait. Uh, and it, it will give any death rattle units a plus one to their save roll um, if they're within their own territory. Now this is talking about the few, you know, using some of the other rules and synergies that this is really good, uh, an even better anvil, um, kind of for uh, sticking in the back uh, by your own objectives, by your own, own graveyard, grave sites, uh, in your own deployment zone. Um, so that's really interesting, kind of a stay back. Now it calls it the bait. Um, this is interesting. It, it, doesn't quite feel like a trick as much as it just feels like a really strong handle. Um, so just interesting here is that they're trying to create some flavor here. In this first rule, it didn't quite sit with me, uh, but I, I like the overall, what they're trying to do uh, with him. And then we got Ageless Cunning. Instead of setting up a Legion of Night uh, unit on the battlefield, you can place it to one side and set it up an ambush. And then it can come on, uh, you can do this with up to three units, and it can come on within six inches of the battlefield edge more than nine inches away from any models. This is crazy. This is really cool. Being able to um, uh, put set up your uh, big monsters off the field and have them, uh, you could bring terror guys, you could bring your zombie dragon, your vampire lord on zombie dragon, you could bring, bring in more gas, um, you could be bringing uh, blood knights. Um, and to have these units, especially uh, you know against uh, an army that's gonna want to take first turn and do a lot of magical damage or shooting damage, Take these guys off the board first turn, and I can come in uh, off the board uh, at a later time in the game, wait till late game or something like that. And in the meantime, you've got uh, uh, skeletons in the back that are just going to uh, chill out, uh, absorb the damage, and uh, and not worry about it too much. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. That is kind of cunning. Again, though, that's very aggressive. That's very in your face. Is that so much cunning, or is that you know more of a corn move or more of a you know, that sort of stuff. Obviously, ambushes tends to be uh, with a, a more cunning, um, you know, the Vanguard, the Stormcast have these kind of rules. So, you know, yeah, maybe it's a little more uh, cunning and under the under the radar. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of artifacts that they talk about. Um, this one's weird. Unbending Will from the Legion of Night units within 12 inches of this generally reroll for battle shock tests. I guess if you're feeling a lot of a lot of um, you know, skeletons, then you're going to, you know, eventually take some battle shock tests if they take off a lot of models. But for death, this usually isn't, you know, at least for the elite units, this is not that big of a deal. So if you're taking, you know, blood knights, or if you're talking bar guys, you know, they're not usually taking battle shock tests. Um, so it's, it seems kind of, uh, you know, situational or only when you're running forward type units. Uh, unholding impetus, if this general slays any model in the combat phase, pick a Legion of Night unit, friendly unit, Legion of Night unit within three inches, and that onto the attack characteristic. So now you've got a, the ability to slay a hero and then add one to attack. So you're going to want to make sure you're doing this in the right order. Um, so these are really cool. Um, let's see, we've got the Curse Blade. Uh, this one's really, uh, really interesting. This is basically kind of like a soul suck. Um, you pick an enemy hero in your hero phase, and so you kind of like you set your who's your nemesis um, at the beginning of, after everybody's set up, etc. And in your hero phase, as long as the enemy hero is on the battlefield, you can roll a dice. So it doesn't even matter if you don't have line of sight. And on a four up, you suffer a mortal wound, and you can heal a mortal wound. So you're just sniping from, from the get go, uh, which is a fantastic trait um, to be able to just kind of weaken an enemy hero before they get too close. And just get, again, this one definitely fits, I think, with uh, the, what they're talking about with Manfred. Um, just being a little more cunning, a little more deceiving. 
uh, Morbeg's claw in your hero phase, you can declare a bearer or carve sigils in the ground. If you do so, it may not move, charge, or attack this turn, which you can add two to the casting roll made by a friendly Legion of Night Wizards. Now that's interesting because Arcan has the kind of the magic lockdown, um, and I don't remember that there's much that boosts their casting. Um, at least not from preview, there's probably something in there that boosts casting. Um, but, you know, you get this cast, you've got uh, um, the Corpse Cart can, can uh, buff the casting, I think probably one of the Mortis Engine or something like that. Um, or one of the, the, you know, one of these is going to buff that casting. So, you know, Manfred, uh, Legion of the Night, could be very heavy with magic as well and be very reliable. Um, <coughs> so, there's a, you know, a couple of things here that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, that seem really interesting and um, even some stuff that lets you bring bar guys in and, and make them uh, uh, plus one attack characteristics. So, um, Manfred, cunning, pretty cool. Now we get the Bloodseeker Palakin. Um, and really this is a combined kit. It seemed like it from the scroll. That it's a combination of the Coven Throne and the Mortis Engine. Um, so, you know, looking at pictures of it, uh, it is the mostly the Mortis Engine uh, with the Blood uh, kind of bowl and one the one main vampirus at the top. Um, and uh, if you manage to kill a hero um, within nine inches of the Bloodseeker Pelican, and it'll provide nearby soul blighting with additional attacks. So here's another case where slanting a hero. So if you used um, the ability up here, the swooping, uh, what was it? The, Oh, where was it? I can't remember. Uh, there was one up there that were um, uh, where you could, if you kill the hero, you could add one to the attack characteristic. It seems like this could stack on top of that, unless this was the same one and I was just reading it twice. Um, Blood Siphon, you can cast on a six, picking any hero from 12. On one of three, the hero suffers one mortal wound, on four, five, D3, and on a six, the hero suffers D6 mortal wounds. Um, so these are, these are pretty cool, and they're really here to buff. Uh, the vampire soul blight unit. So this is specifically a soul blight um, type um, model, which is really cool. We haven't seen a lot about the soul blight stuff that's in here. Whether or not we're going to get the same um, uh, artifacts and uh, command abilities, etc., that we have from the general handbook, um, or if there's anything more that they want to provide us. Um, that's you know, and I don't know if they get the grave sites or anything like that. So that's all new, and interesting. Um, tomorrow, like I said, is the, is the release. Um, there's, so, uh, one of the things that was interesting as we we're waiting for this release to happen, zombies came off of the website for a little bit and everyone got excited and there's always that speculation. Are they going to finally redo those, uh, silly looking zombies, uh, on the New Zealand website, uh, there's a, a repack and rebase on rounds of the old zombies. So don't get your hopes up if that's what you're thinking. Um, so tomorrow, uh, the Battle Tome comes out. You can go to the New Zealand, uh, web, you know, go to the website, pick New Zealand as your place. You can see some of the previews and the pictures, etc. Don't worry about the pricing. Um, and start seeing some of those things. You can see some 360s of the um, different Harbingers. Um, you know, they look much more fantastic in, in 360 degrees. Um, and some of the models and the kit, you know, putting two kits together, etc. So go check it out. If you enjoyed this video, like it. If you enjoyed this whole series of me just kind of trying to jump on and, and recap and tell you my thoughts on it, um, then subscribe to the channel. I'll try and do more of these. But, and if you like some of the other stuff we're doing, the hobby uh, previews and walking through those things, and walking through our campaign phase stuff with our um, skirmish role-playing campaign um, and with that pack releasing in one week, um, please subscribe and stay uh, up to date. Um, if you're, uh, if you have any ideas on, uh, thoughts and feelings on this, the, the Legion of the Night or this release coming out, leave those in the comment section below. Hope you have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon.